What's going on guys? Johnny GB here bringing you guys my draft analysis for the Pokemon 4 Glory Next Generation, the quote unquote D League Development League for the Pokemon 4 Glory. I'm excited to be a part of the league this season and I'm very happy about the team I drafted along with some of the changes that Pokemon 4 Glory does. The first being we draft Z crystals. Now the tiering is very similar to stuff I've done in the past leagues, so that part is easy. But the actual part about drafting Z crystals was an interesting uh, development to the draft. Uh, along with that, filled with 15 other great coaches, people I know in the community, uh, some that I know better than others. But this league is mostly to have fun. All the leagues I've been playing have been super competitive. Now, this will be competitive, but my main goal here is really just to enjoy and have fun in the league. Uh, something I haven't really taken advantage of is enjoying building, enjoying playing games, no salt after games. So, this will be the second Wi-Fi league that you guys will have content-wise on the channel. The uploads for this will be every Friday. So, next Friday, not this coming Friday... Uh, so that would be the 19th. You guys will see my week one battle up live on the channel. Uh, I'm not sure on a specific time, but you will be seeing it next Friday. Draft analysis, I mean, team builders, I will be doing on Thursdays for you guys. But without further ado, get right into the draft now. P4G does something very similar that I've done with ICBA. Instead of requiring everybody to draft Omega, we've created, they created an ultra tier. This ultra tier, you could either use to draft a mega Pokemon, three tiers worth of mega, mega tier one, you lost 40 points, mega tier two or zero points, mega tier three, you got 40 extra free points. The ultra tier were mons that are questionable in draft format where you could take them and you would lose 100 free points. And I decided to opt to go with the ultra. This S tier ultra pick, I went with Magearna. This is a Pokemon that it's never been used by me in any sort of draft league. I feel like it's a great defensive typing, Steel Fairy, very good. Also, it's just a very good setup sweeper, whether it's Shift Gear, whether it's Trick Room. There's just a lot that uh, Magearna does well. Also gets access to stuff like Bolt Switch from Switch Initiative. Ice Beam, you get access to stuff like Floor Cannon. It's a very good Z user, but I'll get into the Z Crystals later on in the draft. And I feel like it's just a good start of a core for me and something I can really build a team around in the future. Now, to pair up with Magearna, I needed a good dragon type, and tier 1 had some solid dragon types to choose from. Now, if I remember correctly, I was like 11th or 12th in the, or 11th or 10th in the draft, so I mean, it wasn't a fantastic draft order for me. So, my next pick was actually Garchomp. So, Garchomp made it back around to me in round 2, and... I've used I've used it sparingly. I've not used it much and I haven't used it very well, but I feel like with the right support on my team, I could use Garchomp very effectively. And it pairs up very well with Magearna. Um just the offensive synergy there between those two. I have a nice physical attacker. I have Magearna that's special attacker. So they pair very well offensively, pretty much don't have a struggle against most uh, defensive cores now. I mean, there's some defensive mons that I do struggle with, uh, with both of these mons. But Garchomp allows me to run stuff like Scarf Chomp. I have Life Orb. I have Bulky Garchomp. It's a Stealth Rocker, so right away I get a Stealth Rocker. I get a Dragon. I get an Offensive Sweeper, potentially, all in one pick. So the team right now with Magearna Garchomp I was very happy with. I was like, okay, the team is looking very good, very balanced right now. And now I needed to go with some bulk. 
and I needed a really good ground switching because Megarna does not like dealing with ground types. Guard Chomp doesn't really have the best recovery, so not much I can really switch Guard Chomp into. So I went with Tangrowth. Now, I've not used Tangrowth in League. I've used its pre-evolution Tangela, but Tangrowth for me works a little bit better since I'm not forced into Eviolite all the time. And I'm able to run stuff like Assault Vest, I'm able to run Leftovers, different items so I'm not forced into the Eviolite every week. Gets access to good support moves, Knock Off, Leech Seed, Sleep Powder. So, it's a very solid mod, very good defensive mod that pairs up well with Magirna being that good ground resist. Issue is it does add another ice resist, uh, ice weakness to my team. Magirna is an okay ice resist, uh, very solid one. And... It just gives me some bulk onto the team. Now, at this point, I thought of going Regenerator. I was really tempted to go for Slow King, Slow Bro potentially later on, uh, just to have that Regenerator, possibly even Alamomola. They were just in my minds to use, uh, but instead I wanted some speed. I wanted some hazard stacking because Garchomp, Magirna, they really like Pokemon being weakened, so I need some type of hazard setting. And I went with Greninja, and it's a very good hazard setter, but it's also a very good offensive mod. Very fantastic offensive move pool, uh, physical, special-wise, just has very good coverage, full sides. Now, this is just regular Torrent Greninja. It does get access to spikes and toxic spikes, so having two forms of hazard setting between toxic spikes and spikes is very good for my opponent's Pokemon to be weakened. Magirna Garchomp can take advantage of those weakened Pokemon. And uh, I love setting up hazards. I love using Greninja. I've used Protean Greninja. Uh, so using regular Greninja now. And it's uh, many different ways that it can attack. Whether Ice Beam, 4 moves, Special Attack. It can be a reliable U-Turner. So I have a good synergy now. And I'm actually loving the team so far. 4 picks in. I'm very happy with the team. Now we're going into my 5th pick of the draft now. When I'm looking at this pick, I needed some type of Pokemon right around that 110 to 112 speed. And I want to use bonds I have not used in League before. And this was one that just sat there available. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with Lycan Rock Dusk because it hits decently hard with Tough Claws. It has... Much better coverage now, getting access to stuff like Drill Run, Thunder Fang, Fire Fang. It's access to stuff, uh, Stone Edge. Now, I will explain the Z-Move situation later on. I do not choose Z-Users. I do have the Z-Crystal to use onto it. Uh, but Lycanroc does. Base 110 speed, it's what I want. So now my speed tiers go from 122 with Greninja, 110 with Lycanroc. 102 or 101 with Garchomp, so very happy with that. Get nice spacing out there. Uh, but gives me a taunt user, gives me a stealth rocker, very good physical attacker. So it's a mod that I wanted to try. It looks cool, wanted to try it, see how it does in league format. And it's probably one of the two mods I'm actually very excited to use in this draft. Now, round four. I decided I needed a fire type and Blaziken was really one of the only fire types that were in tier four that I'm like, hey, you know what? I've never used a Blaziken. So I'm gonna actually give this a shot and I've seen Blaziken used very well. I've seen it used as a reliable choice scarfer. I believe it's at base 85 speed. So it's right at, right at that speed where it's a very good choice scarf user. You also have stuff Coverage wise, where it's physical move pool, gets access to stuff like Brave Bird, Thunder Punch, High Jump Kick. So it's a very versatile mod. There's a lot I could potentially do with it offensively. And I just needed something that could really help break walls. And you know what? Blaziken actually does that very well. I also wanted a fighting type. So I got the best of both here, getting a fighting and a fire type into the one Pokemon. I know there's probably some other stuff I could have taken, like Embor. But 
I've used Emboar quite a few times in League, so it's time for me to mix it up and go with Blaziken. Now, my tier 5 pick, this was one I had to have. This is a Pokemon I love using, I've used it well. I went with Kecleon. Now, those that have seen my ICBA battles know how much I love using this Pokemon. It's a Stealth Rocker, has very good special defense. Three forms of priority, Fake Out, Shadow Sneak, Sucker Punch. Just all around good Pokemon for me that I love using. Knock Off, Elemental Punches, good special move pool. It does a lot. The problem for many people is it doesn't do many of those things well, but for me, it's something that it's versatile. I love using it. it just fits my style of Pokemon in all honesty that I can come up with different variety of sets that are very effective for it. So I'm very excited to have Kecleon back. It was one of the tier fives that I saw and absolutely had to have. Now for our, my free picks. So I needed more hazard removal because my hazard removal at this point was Blaziken. And Blaziken's not the most reliable defogger. So I went with another Pokemon that did get access to defog and that is Silvali. Now, Silvali is actually interesting because I do have access to all types. So, I can mix and match the Silvalis I need on my team. Uh, whether I'm weak to a certain type, I can bring a Silvali to deal with that type. And its move pool, very solid, does get access to Parting Shot, which is actually very nice. Seeing as I have Garchomp, Blaziken, Lycanroc, and Gearna, that are nice offensive juggernauts that take advantage of my opponent being forced to switch out, which Zivali does with parting shot lowering attack and special attack. So that'll be a very interesting thing for me. Now, next up, I need an electric type. I wanted Volt Switch and I got it with Heliolisk. Now, the issue with drafting Heliolisk is my fighting weakness just got much worse. Uh, Greninja, Lycanroc, Kecleon, Silvali to an extent, and even Garchomp, as most fighting types do get access to like Ice Punch. So, Heliolisk did add to my fighting weakness, but it gave me a good Volt Switch user and some po uh, and a Pokemon to really just hit hard on the special side, which is what I wanted. I want some balance to my team, and it's a Pokemon again. I have not used Heliolisk. I've seen it used, I've seen it used very well. It hits very hard, so it's a Pokemon that I'm on the fence about. There are some transactions that I am thinking of that I might end up actually doing. So Helios may or may not stay, depending on if I go through with these transactions. Now, next up we have Autono. Now I've used Autono way back when, when the OBC was a league. And this time I drafted it not only as a wish passer, but it gives me another trick room setter. That's something I needed to look for in terms of drafting was I have Magirna. So I need well, at least one other form of trick room setting. Unfortunately, Kecleon does not get trick room, but Autono does. And with that, it's also a wish passer. So it can keep my Magirna healthy. It can keep stuff like, uh, Blaziken, Lycanroc, Greninja healthy, even Silvali, as Silvali doesn't have access to recovery. So the wish passing support role, pretty much a cleric was needed on my team because Garchomp doesn't like being burned, Tangrowth doesn't like hit, getting hit with Toxic. So Autono really just fit the synergy of the team of me needing more bulk plus needing some type of wish passing cleric role on my team now for the final pick of the pokemon for glory next generation is mr mime now i needed a fighting resist and i know this is the last thing from an actual fighting resist yes it does resist fighting times four but it's not the bulkiest thing in the world and um you know what it's an offensive mod i need a psychic type well i didn't really need a psychic type but having a psychic type helped and it's just, it was just there. Uh, granted, now it is part of the transactions I'm thinking about making, so it may or may not be on the team by week two. 
Uh, but Mr. Mime was just there. It gave me something that hit decently special, uh, special wise. It also had a decent speed tier at 95. So uh, it was just something that really had to use with my leftover points. I wanted Palosand. Had I had Palosand, I probably wouldn't even think of transactions to make. Uh, but unfortunately, that was sniped from me. And you know what? Mr. Mime might fit the role of the team. Um, I do have decent steel switch ins and decent um, poison switch in with Magirna and Garchomp. But that is my team for the Pokemon for Glory. Next generation now. As far as the Z Crystal goes, we were to draft Z Crystals, which added a different element to the actual draft and pretty much planning out when to draft our Z Crystal. Now, unfortunately, I did not take my Z Crystal high enough. I was looking at potentially Ferium or Groundinium Z, and I got stuck with Electrium Z. Now, where does Electrium Z help me? Well, Lycanroc Dust gets access to Thunderfang, Nagirna gets access to Volt Switch, so I do have some options to run with Electrium Z, and Heliolus can actually use Electrium Z very well, uh, and use it to hit hard. So, that is my draft analysis for the Oregon Ducklets this season of the Pokemon for Glory Next Generation. Again, this will probably be up, I want to say, on either Tuesday or Wednesday. And then from now on, you guys will see all the battles on Friday. The team builders on Thursday, I'll be making sure I get both of those done so that I can keep you guys consistent content uh, for this Pokemon for Glory. And I'm very excited to be a part of the league. So if you guys enjoyed this, go like the video, comment. Any suggestions for the team that may work? Um, I, if I do make transactions, I will put out a transaction video after my week one game. And go over, check out some of the other coaches. I will leave a link to all their channels down below. So go over to their channel, subscribe, watch their content, watch their draft analysis. And with all that being said, guys, I am Johnny GB, and I'm out.